Hi everyone and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial here on my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylee June and I'm a beauty and fashion photographer based near Sydney, Australia. And on this channel, we discuss all things photography and retouching related. So as I said, today's video is going to be a Photoshop tutorial and it's going to be on how to create a professional color grade in Photoshop. So we're gonna be talking about a couple of techniques that I've not really mentioned too much on this channel before. And that is going to include the blend if sliders in Photoshop. So we're gonna look at how you can kind of layer some adjustments layers and really create interesting color grade effects while using these blend if sliders as well. So we're going to get straight into this tutorial today and I hope you guys enjoy. So now that we've got our image here in Photoshop, we're really going to go through a few tips on color grading in Photoshop and some things that can really help to get you that professional color grade. So if I choose to do the bulk of my color grading in Photoshop, I tend to not make too many color based adjustments in Lightroom or Capture One prior to importing the image into Photoshop. I really want to do most of my color grading in Photoshop. So realistically, I won't be adjusting much in Lightroom or Capture One, as I said. So some of the methods I like to use to implement a color grade in Photoshop is by using adjustment layers. And adjustment layers can be found just down here. And a couple of the ones that I really like to use are selective color, gradient map, and also color balance. They're kind of like my three go-tos for color grading in Photoshop. So today I'm gonna to actually take you through using a couple of these adjustment layers to create a color grade. And then I'm going to be talking through the blend if sliders. Now they're not something that I think are probably talked about enough with Photoshop color grading, but they're a really useful tool for blending some of these layers and really getting the effect that you want, especially over skin tones, because this is where color grading can be quite difficult, especially with beauty photography, like the genre that I usually like to do or even just general portraiture or fashion, you really need to be aware of how the skin tone is looking when you're color grading and you sometimes can't push certain sliders or certain colors too far in either direction. So first off, I'm going to bring up a color balance layer. And you can see I've got my other layers down here, like my dodging and burning and my cloning. I usually tend to do this before I start color grading in Photoshop. I really like to have that kind of clean slate. Once I've done and removed all the little elements that I don't want in the image, I really then like to step into color grading from there. So with this color balance adjustment layer, I'm going to make some adjustments up the top here. Now with color balance, you have a little drop down here that will allow you to go into the shadows, midtones, and highlights and adjust those sections of the image. And the ones that I really like to focus on are the shadows and the highlights. The midtones are really going to pick up a lot of the skin tone in particular. So you do need to be very careful with this section and how things look. I tend to start with the shadows and highlights and then adjust the midtones slightly as I need to. So let's first go into the shadows. It really sometimes helps to have a reference for how you would like to color grade an image, really sort of like a starting point for where you wanna go with an image. It really helps in that sense because you have something to refer to. Sometimes it's hard to know where to start with color grading. So I always like to have a few ideas like that in mind, but for this one, we're going to be a little bit more spontaneous and we're gonna figure it out as we go along. So usually I'll just start by moving some of these sliders either way. I really do think that having like a bit more of a pink base in this image is going to work more so than the green. I think especially with the yellow backdrop, it kind of just gives it a little bit of a nice warmer tint, but also we're going for that very feminine look with this image. So I'm going to just kind of push it over to the magenta side a little bit more. So you can see now that we're in the shadow section that is really altering most of the shadows in the image, not so much of the mid-tones. And then I'm also going to Play around with this slider here and I think maybe just pushing it over to the blue side again is creating that really interesting base, that very pretty coloring that kind of complements the image well. So I'm just going to move that a little bit over to the blues. And then moving the top slider, I can probably just move it a bit more over to the cyan, but I'm not going to push that too far. Now I'm going to go over to the highlights and I think maybe adding a bit more of a warmer tone in the highlights. So maybe the yellow to complement the yellow background is kind of nice. It's a nice contrast between the pink as well. And then looking at how this looks with the magenta and the green, we are really affecting the highlights in the image. I'm gonna push it slightly to the greens and then I'm gonna move up to the top slider and I'm just gonna push that just into the cyans there. Now I might actually come back to the shadows and the highlights tab once I've gone into the midtones and adjusted that a bit more just to play around with certain colors and see how everything looks. So I'm going to go straight into the midtones now and I'm going to just play around with this slider a little bit. 
think we're going to push this to the greens a little bit more just to kind of make sure that the skin tone is looking quite balanced here because as I said this is very difficult sometimes when you've got a lot of skin tone in an image to really color grade that and then also moving maybe the blues over a little bit more just to keep that base intact and I'm not really going to change the top one but we are going to go back to the highlights and I think we don't want to alter this too much at this point, I think. So probably just keeping that intact. And let's go into the shadows again. I might push the magenta over just that little bit more. And the blues over again a little bit more as well. So as I said, we are going to be using the blend if sliders to blend this layer a little bit more. So it won't look exactly how it's looking now, but I am going to go to my adjustment layers down the bottom here again. And this time we're going to select selective color. We're then going to really work with the whites, neutrals and blacks. And that's going to work in a similar way to how the color balance layer just worked. So really working with the highlights, neutrals, and then the shadows of the image, which is virtually what the whites, neutrals and blacks equate to. So first off going into the whites, I'm going to just move the sliders around. I actually really like how that's kind of looking. It's looking a little bit like vintage in how the image is coming across. So I'm going to actually push it a little bit this way and kind of drain the yellows a little bit more out of the highlights. And then I think just creating that contrast by maybe taking a little bit of the magenta away in the highlights too is kind of an interesting effect. And I probably won't adjust the top one too much. I'll probably leave that as is. Then we'll go into the shadows and let's have a look if we push the magenta up Bring it back down. Probably won't adjust that too much because it is starting to push it too much in the wrong direction. But I'll go into the yellows and I kind of like how it's looking if I push it over to the blues a little bit more. And then the cyans can probably just stay at zero. And then moving on to the neutrals, which is really going to be affecting some of the skin tone as well. So we've got to be a little bit more careful with this just again. So we don't want to push this too far. I actually think just warming it up a little bit on the skin tone itself in the mid tones is kind of nice. So I'm just going to leave that like that. And then I'm going to leave the rest probably all at zero for now. And I'm actually going to just turn off these and show you what that's done. So this is the color balance layer. And then this is the selective color. So you can see that we're really bringing out certain parts of the image here. And just to do a full before and after there, let's just go back to the original. So that was the before, and now this is the after. So we're gonna work on this a little bit more. I think this is really starting to take on a bit of a 60s kind of vintage film vibe with the coloring. And I really wanna continue with that aspect, but I do wanna blend the layers a little bit more so the skin tone is just looking pretty balanced. And the way that we can do this, as I mentioned before, is we can actually double click on the layer. And then you'll have this properties box where you can see down here, it says blend if. Now these are the blend if sliders that I was mentioning before. So you can make an impact if you adjust either one of these sliders. However, I usually tend to stick to the underlying layer. And the way that you can adjust this is you can move these straight across. Now it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but if you see me moving that across, and then just in this section here, you'll see how the blending really affects certain parts of the image. So you can see how that's working. And then here is mainly the highlights. So we're looking at the darker colors in the image here and then the highlights being blended on top. Now, one way that I really like to separate this because a lot of the time you can really start to see the hard lines creeping in when you start to blend and that's not what we want at all. So what you can actually do is hold down Alt or Option for a Mac and click on these pointers so they actually divide and then you can start sliding these across and they tend to blend a lot better. You do just need to be careful though because if you move it too far next to the other half it will actually join them again so you can just press alt again to divide them so I'm gonna just really try and blend this and I'll do the same with the highlight. So you can see here as, especially in this area, 
it's going to be a bit more yellow tinted. So I kind of don't mind how that's looking and I'm going to really just move that across. And this is actually going to affect the highlights in the skin tone too, just in here. And moving that down, it's going to give it a bit more of a yellow, a bit more of a softer effect when you tend to use these sliders. Now this was just for the selective color layer to be blended. So we didn't do too many adjustments on this layer. So it won't be as impactful as maybe the color balance. So I'm just gonna click okay for now. And then we're going to double click on the color balance layer. And we're gonna do the same thing working with the underlying layer. So again, we're going to see how this all blends. And this one you can see it a lot more easier because we did make a, quite a few more adjustments with the color balance adjustment layer. And you can see how that really blends into the skin tone. So you can see if we want a little bit more of a softer effect, we're going to have to divide this pointer by holding down Alt or Option. And then you can really notice this in the shadows, just in the skin tone here, how that blends. So if you want a little bit more of a neutral effect, we're just gonna shift that up a little bit more. And we can keep that down there if we want a little bit more contrast with the shadow as well. So same thing with the highlight. I'm going to divide them. So you can really see how this kind of affects the skin tone. The more I have it pushed up here, the more pinkish toned it is. And then if I move it down this way, it's a little bit softer. So I'm going to move it just down that way so it is a bit softer. And then moving this down... Sometimes you won't get too much of a difference there. But overall, I think that that's quite good. So I'm going to click OK now. I'm pretty happy with that blending. And then I'm going to take a quick snapshot and show you guys the before. So the before we actually altered the blend if sliders. So this is the before and then this is the after. So we've really just softened how everything's kind of come across in the image. This is looking quite stark here with how the color has been applied in the highlights. And here we've just brought it down a notch and this was the before image. And then we've just brought it down a notch here. So it all kind of like looks quite creamy and all the colors have blended well in together. So I'm actually going to go back to my original photo. So this was the before and then this is the after. So it's a really nice, subtle color grade. And if you wanted to adjust some of these layers further, you can. So say if I wanted to go to selective color and I wanted to go back to the blacks and I wanted to maybe move up the colors a little bit more in the shadows there. You can do that just to get a little bit more of a tone in there. Or even going into the color balance. You can go in and maybe just adjust that further, maybe going into the mid-tones. And there we go. So I'll take another quick snapshot and we've just added a bit more color back into that. So again, before and then after. So we're trying to really still keep that skin tone balanced in this shot as well. And that's the most important thing. You can also use masking. So obviously adjustment layers are great for that. If you need to mask out some of the coloring that you might've done on a portrait image, you can easily go onto the layer mask, choose a brush with a black coloring, and then you can actually remove some of the color if you need to, depending on the image. So if I undo that, you can see that that's just removed that area and masking is really good for that. So that's another way that you can really keep that balance with the skin tone while you're color grading. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial today. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you do because I'll be posting lots more tutorials like this one. Make sure as always to put down in the comment section below what you'd like me to film for this channel and what you'd like to see. I'm always open to hearing your requests. But thank you so much for watching this video again and I'll see you in the next one.